live from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering Dell EMC World 2016. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Dell World, Dell EMC World. Fourth time I've done that today, Stu. Uh, 2016, we're here in Austin, Texas. This is the Cube, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Scott Winslow is here, he's the president and founder of Winslow Partners, Cube alum. Scott, good to see you again. Glad to be here. So what a difference a year makes. Yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this last year. That's right. But uh, now we're actually living it. I, I remember last year uh, vividly we met and spoke and the, uh, the intention to do the acquisition had just been announced and yeah, here we are a year later and uh, it's, it's happened. So what's happened in the channel? Um, you know, give us the update. A lot of people are concerned. You know, anytime you have a big merger like this, you got two companies, you know, very well known for direct sales. Uh, although the industry has become much more channel friendly, is it true from your perspective? Yeah, um, we're we're excited about what's uh, happening. I mean, I think if I look at our company and maybe go back five years ago, we were a Compellent partner, and Dell acquired Compellent in Q1 of 2011, uh, and it was kind of an uh oh moment. Like, boy, this could be problematic and it really turned out to be an inflection point for the growth of our company. Uh, when Dell acquired Compellent, we were doing $7 million a year in top line sales. You know, five, four years later, four and a half years later, you know, now we'll do $25 million a year in top line sales. So I look at that um, acquisition that happened and uh, the opportunity that it presented for us to have a broader portfolio and, uh, and how we grew the company. So, as we look at this opportunity, we're saying, hey, this could, be, this could be the same thing. Maybe now our target should be 100 million a year, and I don't think we'd have that opportunity without this uh, acquisition taking place. So, we think it's exciting. Scott, so has, has the acquisition changed the product mix that you're selling? Maybe give us kind of last year versus this year, you know, what, what, what's the same, what's different? Yeah, well, we're still selling the legacy Dell product line, server storage, networking, uh, hyper-converged products. Uh, so for us, the big revenue producers are Compellent, Dell Nutanix, FX2s, Vertex, R900s, R700 servers. Uh, in the last 90 days, we've become an EMC partner. So we uh, signed up, got on board, and uh, you know, within 90 days, we've closed a VCE, a VxRail, a data domain, and a Unity solution. So I guess what's changed in our mix is it's broader, and while we're still learning it, we've got the EMC uh, portfolio in our bag now. Okay, so you, you've been a partner on the, the Dell Nutanix, the XC yes. line, and you've also sold VxRail. Yep. One of the things everybody's kind of looking at and you know, trying to say, okay, you know, Michael has said Nutanix is an important partner. Yep. Uh, we even saw Chad Sackage, who runs the EMC Convert Platform division, uh, saying, you know, yes, of course it's in the portfolio. He kind of paints it in a corner as to you know, where it should be positioned. What do you see, how do you talk to customers? You know, when is it Dell Nutanix? When is it VxRail? What, how do you see that progressing? Yeah, well I think one, we feel fortunate to have all of it, you know, the XC series as well as the blocks, racks, and rails, you know, in our bag. So that's probably for starters. Um, for 18 months we've been out there developing a nice hyper-converged business with the XC series. So I'm glad, one of the things we love about working with Michael is that he's got an open standards uh, philosophy, so he didn't walk away from that relationship. Uh, they've continued with the XC series, they just introduced the Haswell processor into the XC series, so they're continuing to develop that. They've uh, signed a long-term relationship uh, with Nutanix, and I think Michael has the foresight to see that he's going to need both of those solutions uh, in his portfolio. For us, um, we have customers that are with us here this week at uh, Dell EMC World that have invested in this technology, that are very happy about it. Um, we're bullish on the uh, Dell Nutanix technology. We think maybe it scales a little bigger than some people in the industry would uh, give it uh, credit for. We think they've got something really special going on. Uh, at the same time, uh, as a good Dell EMC partner, uh, we're getting trained on VCE. VCE is certainly a leader in the converged um, area, uh, and then you know they've quickly made up ground with uh, VxRail and VxRack. There's there's a lot of people out there that have very strong relationships 
with EMC, and they're you know very interested in those products. So we, we see it as a as a um, uh, embarrassment of riches, I guess. It's great, Scott. <laughs> can you give us a little bit of a, you know window into the customers you are talking to. Yeah. David Golden uh, this morning got up and said that you know 80% of customers are still kind of asking to buy ingredients, and you sell Dell EMC pieces and you sell the you know fully baked uh, you know VXRL hot out of the oven or or the Nutanix so um, you know how do you see that 80% you know, how fast do you see them moving over to that? You know, yeah. where do you see hyper-converged? Uh, where's the natural water level in your mind as to yeah. how much of the market it fits today or maybe in the next 12 to 18 months? I'd say most of the, we, we try to be a trusted advisor, that's kind of our role, right, as a, a solution provider. Most of our customers are talking to us about, do we make another uh, turn of the uh, crank with a kind of traditional 3-2-1 server networking storage solution, or do we, uh, move down the hyper-converged path. So it's kind of up to us to help them through that. A lot of it depends on workload. Some of it depends on, you know, do they need server networking storage all at the same time? Because you got, you got to look at the acquisition piece of this. If a customer is in need of a, a, a storage solution, uh, then you know, it might not be the right time to go with a, 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 a hyper-converged uh, infrastructure. That's why you know, I think VDI has certainly been the, the kind of classic application for hyper-converged because any, any kind of new application like that, you've got to acquire all of those at once. So. so how do you help customers position, take the Nutanix example, yeah. from other hyper-converged uh, products in your portfolio, be they converged infrastructure, like uh, you know, VC, V-blocks, or VxRail, VxRack, how do you adjudicate or help customers understand yeah. the differences and the well, fit? Yeah, one, it gives us a great role, right? Because we've got a pretty big portfolio, so it's, it's tough for them to kind of sort through it, so it gives us a, a, a great role to play. Um, like I said, we look at workloads and try to identify, you know, based on the workloads, we run tools like DPAC and get an idea of what the I.O. requirements are, um, what the storage requirements are. You know, sometimes it comes down to relationship, too. You might have a situation where a customer has a very strong relationship with one OEM vendor over the other. So we kind of, we go in with a, a sales and systems engineering team, sort through the data, and, and, and make a recommendation. But we've got a couple, couple of horses in this race. So, notwithstanding the relationship, because yeah. I would actually argue that's probably the most important, yeah. right? But notwithstanding that, take that out of the equation for a second. Do you actually discern significant or meaningful differences yeah. in platforms? Well, I mean, it, it, one of the things that we've loved about the Dell Nutanix platform is that it supports multiple hypervisors. So that's certainly one so thing. That's a feature function yeah. capability that right. may not be uh, available elsewhere. Right, so you're supporting VMware, you're supporting you know, uh, KVM, Hyper-V, uh, Acropolis hypervisor. Uh, so you know, that becomes an important distinction. Uh, one of the things we like about that te technology is it has the ability to do a lot of things non-disruptively, kind of one-click uh, upgrades, whether it's storage, operating system. Uh, so, you know, that's, uh, that's some of the things that we really like uh, about the technology. But if you look at like a, a VX rail, you know, um, very um, one throat to choke, uh, really a great uh, solution around VMware. So again, it just, Michael's all about having choice. It gives us options. And uh, we like we like having options because we think it gives us more of a chance to win. Hi, what are your thoughts on the, the problem? What are your customers. thoughts on, on Scott on the the VMware AWS deal and how that might affect positively or negatively the the business that you're currently executing? Yeah, well, I mean, again, I think it shows that Michael's uh, committed to open standards. I mean, uh, you know, the coming together of Dell and EMC was uh, a uh, kind of miraculous moment, and I think you see them you know, uh, to have VMware and AWS partner together uh, kind of underscores his, his commitment to uh, open standards. Well, it's interesting, right, that you're calling AWS open standard, right? A lot of people would, but, but it's all about your definition of open, right? Yeah. If, it's, if it's available and it's popular, it's open. Right. So, and it's about choice, as you said. Let's talk about the profitability model. Yeah. From, a, from a partner perspective, the channel's perspective, how do you look at that? Obviously, you want to make money, margin's important. What do you look for in a, in a program, in a framework? Yeah, um, we've had a very good experience with Dell, I guess I would say first off, as a legacy Dell partner, so the profitability model was very good. And when I talk about that, I talk about things like, as we're providing value, opening new accounts, providing the technical team that's got the 
technical goods to evangelize and the salespeople to close the business, they've rewarded us uh, handsomely, I, I, I would say. Um, so whether it's been just the gross margins or MDF money or on-site vendor resources, uh, we feel like they've been uh, a great partner to work with. So as we move forward now with the Dell uh, EMC combined companies, um, we're very excited and we know that our top line is going to grow. We've already seen that. In 90 days, we've uh, closed a VCE, VX Rail, Data Domain, as I mentioned uh, previously, and a Unity opportunity. So we can see that's an incremental 1.3 or $4 million in business. The question we have, and we've posed to John Byrne, is what does that mean to our profitability at the end of the day? You know, you know, you, you like what you know. We know the Dell model, and we know how good it was as we've grown our business. Uh, so I think any businessman on uncertainty, um, you know, rears its head. And I guess one of the things that makes me a little concerned is talking to some legacy EMC partners, and we've kind of compared P and Ls. I've seen that they tend to drive more revenue per headcount, uh, but uh, the gross margins tend to be a little lower and their net profit uh, tends to be lower. So uh, that, and we've seen it already on the four opportunities that we've brought uh, home, that the, the gross margins are lower than what we've seen um, with Dell historically. So well that's a big deal for you guys, yeah. because if the mix shifts dramatically and you, you're making an assumption about the profitability model that you're going to invest back in your business, right. you want certainty. Yeah, um, so I think, and that's why John Burns' program is going to be so important. And that's why we've been really involved as I'm on the Partner Advisory Council, we're advising him. I will say they're listening, they've got big ears. Uh, we've got a lot of confidence in John. Um, but I think that, you know, he says it's going to be an extraordinary partner program. Um, this is the new partner program and the logo. They've introduced that. And he, they're, they're referencing the rest of the industry. What do some of the other large OEM programs look like? And he says at the end of the day, we're going to think it's extraordinary. We have to have a leap of faith here. And I believe that um, if we can deliver the kind of things that the new combined company wants, opening new accounts, being really uh, strong technically, uh, I think that they're going to reward us and, and we have to, but, to bet on that. But it might mean you have to grow faster to throw off as much cash as you have previously. So then the question would become, uh, presumably to Dell, Dell EMC is, how are you going to help me you know, support me in that growth. You right. mentioned MDF and on-site partner resources. Sure. H how do you spend the MDF today and do you see that changing? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, so it's, it's a very rich uh, program. Uh, you know, it's been largely selling uh, Compellent and Dell Nutanix and servers. And uh, so uh, we've, we've gotten some pretty significant uh, rebate dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, as high as, you know, seven or eight percent, even north of that, so you can imagine, you know, for a company that's doing, you know, 25 million in top line, that's uh, pretty uh, noteworthy to, to the bottom line. So um, we, uh, you know, we'd like to uh, see that continue under the new program. Uh, I'm guessing it may be moderated uh, somewhat, um, you know, because historically, if I talk to some other EMC resellers, you know, the rebate and the MDF levels, you know, haven't been that that high. Um, the other thing is with the MDF, we've had to spend money. Uh, back on the business. So even though we've made uh, good sizable rebates, like we have 36 people here at Dell World this week, 24 customers, uh, and we've got 12 employees, and their program encourages you to spend back on the business. We know that those customers are going to come back and continue to invest in Dell EMC. So those are the kind of things we'd like to see to continue. Um, OVR is an on-site vendor resource, so Dell will actually help you as you grow, and if you show you know, loyalty and you, you grow the business in the right ways, they'll help you add resources to your team. And we uh, hope that that kind of um, support will, will continue. So time will tell if the program is Well again, it's critical for you if in yeah. fact the margin model is going to shift, yeah. you got to do more business, right? Stu, go ahead. Yeah, Scott, one of the questions I think we had a year ago was, you're in the Northeast, you're in you know, legacy EMC's backyard, you know, <laughs> was that saturated from a channel standpoint? And it sounds like the answer is no. I think the answer is no. We actually think we're in a unique position. Uh, you know, we've got Hopkinton right there. We have the ability to use a lot of their uh, demo facilities. One of the things, being a, a loyal Dell partner, we're able to go to the EMC teams and say, listen, we sell only your servers, storage, networking. 
we don't have any encumbrances that we're coming in with. Yeah. Some other larger partners that might have an HP relationship. Or, or many of the EMC channel partners are heavy Cisco networking and server partners. Precisely, so yeah. what a unique position that puts us in to not have any of those, like I said, encumbrances where we can tell them that we're going to sell, we've, we've sold only Dell, um, we're a small company, we want to be relevant to somebody, we chose Dell, and now we can continue that and have it be Dell EMC, uh, we think that's a win, and it's gotten a lot of traction with the local uh, Dell EMC sales teams. So what's next for you guys? I know you're trying to sort out the, the uncertainty right now, yeah. you're making that leap of faith, but uh, yeah. focusing on the customers, what are, what are they asking you for? Um, well, I mean, keep plugging away. Um, uh, what, what the customers are asking us for is, you know, infrastructure solutions, uh, how do they, um, you know, uh, move their businesses forward in a pioneering kind of way, uh, and we think we've got the, uh, you know, the portfolio to provide that. I think one opportunity here that a lot of people aren't talking about is EMC has never had a compute platform, ever, in their history. You know, who are the experts on um, providing compute to end users? Uh, we are, because we've been selling that Dell portfolio for a long time. So we think one benefit we can bring back to the EMC team and to our customers is the ability to help that EMC team sell compute against UCS uh, and against HP. And that's a real uh, unique opportunity. Where, uh, where are you investing uh, in your business? I mean, obviously, growing capacity, sales capacity. Yeah. Are you investing in and everybody talks about solutions. Are there so-called solutions that you're investing in to, to create new opportunities? Yeah, we've, uh, well, we've been hiring uh, about one person a month for the last 12 months, so we've been adding across engineering, sales, inside teams. Uh, I think the area we've been investing the most is uh, EMC training. Uh, there's just such a broad portfolio there, so you know, we're in Hopkinton, in Marlboro, in Franklin, uh, getting trained by the EMC teams on you know, VCE, on VxRail, on Isilon, Stream IO, Data Domain. So they've got a lot of different product groups and uh, so we've been spending a lot of time with them. Because one of the value adds we provide to Dell today is we go very deep technically. And you know, we can't do that today with EMC. I mean, we'd be kidding ourselves. So we have to continue to get trained and to be able to provide you know, that kind of value add. That's the only way we're going to be uh, of benefit to them. Mm. So that's, that's an area we're investing in a right. lot. Awesome, well listen, Scott, thanks for coming back on theCUBE, sharing the insights, you know, very frank conversation, really appreciate it. You bet. All right, keep Thank right you. there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Dell EMC World 2016. Be right back.